What is going on, you guys? Pet Platypus here, and it's time to talk about Steven Universe, because the newest set of episodes was amazing. I like to put some more diverse shit on my channel every once in a while, not just anime. And yeah, these last two episodes that just came out yesterday, impeccable. So, well, I mean, there's a few pecs, but we'll get to that. I'm going to be testing out my multi-episode uh, per video format. I'm going to go through all four episodes, similar to what I did for the previous Steven Bomb that I covered. There's a lot of episodes in between that I didn't talk about, but... I mean, if you're watching this video, you either watch Steven Universe so you know what you're about to get into, or you just like watching my videos, and if that's the case, thank you very much, but major spoilers if you ever plan to watch Steven Universe so you have been warned. The first episode we have is Stuck Together, and this episode is about Steven and Lars on the Homeworld ship, on the way to Homeworld, with Topaz and Aquamarine. And that's pretty much the plot of the episode. They have a lot of time to talk to each other. And we get some really good character development from Lars in this episode. The voice acting is on point. It brings the feels. You know, you have them talking to each other while Topaz is trying to fix the engine. And, you know, Lars basically just says it. I'm a wuss. I'm a coward. He starts crying. He's scared of this situation. And Steven's like, yes, I'm scared too. I didn't want to do this. Like, he's like, I wanted to do this at the time, but now I'm scared. Now I want to go home. Now I have to fucking atone for something that I didn't even do, that my mom did. And it brings the feels, I'm not gonna lie. The voice actors really do kill it. And even fucking Topaz feels the feels because she decides to help them. By the way, Topaz's voice. Hilarious. Perfect subversion with that voice. It's, it's great. That was just a great reveal of her talking. It sounded perfect. Uh, it sounded perfect because it doesn't fit what she looks like at all. That, that's what really makes it work. But of course, Aquamarine finds out. There's a bit of a tussle. She says, what are you going to do? Go to Homeworld with my gem in your hand. You're fucked. You know, you're fucked if that happens. So she drops the fucking destabilizer wand. She unfuses and no longer talks to Steven and Lars. Just goes back to ignoring them. And then they get sent off to separate areas. And we don't know what happened to them until the next episode. Cliffhanger. But they're on Homeworld. Huge story progression there. Actually being on Homeworld. We don't see any of it in this episode. But still, the fact that they're there... Is a huge leap forward for the Steven Universe series. Topaz is now a potential new ally, which is really, really cool. We're definitely going to see this character again. I mean, the creators of the show have already said no character appears just once in this series. They always come back, which has been pretty true for the most part. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anybody. I mean, there's a few that haven't, but they're more, you know, recent characters that haven't had the chance to come back yet. But my point is, we'll definitely see Topaz again. I have no doubt in my mind. In fact, we'll probably see Topaz again in upcoming episodes for the big escape from Homeworld that will have to happen. Uh, not for Steven, but for the characters who get left behind, which I will get to when I get to the later episodes in this little arc. But the big takeaway from this episode really is Steven and Lars's conversation. The feels are genuinely there. The voice actors really, really, I gotta give my hats off to the voice actors. They really, really sold it. They did a really good job. That scene was great. And the stuff they said and the way the dialogue is worded. Like, even when Steven says that, you know, he's like, it sucks that you're in this situation because of me, but I'm glad you're here. Isn't that awful? You know, because he doesn't want to be alone, and he feels that it's, he feels that it's, like, selfish. That's like, I'm glad I'm not alone, but it's putting you in huge danger, and he also feels bad about that. And the con conflicting emotion there is great. So, that conversation was fantastic. It's the highlight of the episode for sure. Animation, art, fine in this episode. It didn't really, there wasn't really much that needed to be done. It was a pretty conservative episode, even by Steven Universe standards, a lot of just mouth moving, head moving, really not much going on. But for a dialogue heavy episode, that's really not a big deal. So with that being said, I think this was a great episode for what it was. Nothing mind blowing, but quite good. Let's move on to the trial. Okay. So this episode, the trial, I just got done watching it a second time. This is still an intense episode, man. This episode doesn't just drop a couple bombs, it drops a couple nukes about the death of Pink Diamond, and just, it's, it's pretty crazy. It, it's, it's a, it's a really, really, really great episode, honestly. It might be, I don't know if it's my favorite, it might be my favorite of this little mini arc. Uh, it's really, really good. Um, first of all, I just want to get out of the way. We don't see White Diamond. We don't see White Diamond mentioned. We don't get any hints, except maybe that really big statue-looking thing when we get the big shot of Homeworld. Potentially, that's like a statue of White Diamond, but we don't know. And, uh, yeah, that's just kind of disappointing. It's really, the episode makes up for it, honestly, but it does seem weird that White Diamond isn't there for the trial, that it's just yellow and blue. Maybe she doesn't care about Pink Diamond? Maybe, you know, she has to do other shit. That's why she's not there. I have no idea. Um, 
But yeah, that was a little disappointing, but the rest of the episode makes up for it. The rest of this arc makes up for it. Um, it's a minor thing, but I figured I'd get it out of the way. This episode. Steven is sticking with the lie that Rose Quartz did it. He wants to accept the punishment, and... It's kind of dumb of him, honestly. I mean, as an audience member, you watch him like, don't pretend you're Rose Quartz, don't do this, it's dumb. But you get why he's guilty, and uh, what ends up happening is, through having more and more conversations with, uh, I believe it was a Zircon, they come to an interesting conclusion. What's also interesting is that they're even going through a trial with, like, lawyers and everything to represent a war criminal. I think that's surprisingly fair for Homeworld, but yeah, and of course, Yellow Diamond's being very dismissive of everything, which... We find out maybe why, towards the end of the episode, why she's being so dismissive of everything and Blue Diamond wants to hear her out because they want to know how this happened. They want to know how Rose Quartz could shatter a diamond. It just doesn't seem possible. And once Zircon figures that out, she makes a really good case, and that's where the episode gets really intense. She starts saying things like, how did Rose Quartz get close to Big Diamond? She was already a war criminal when it was happening, when everything was going down. She was already wanted for, like, thousand, not thousand years, a couple hundred years, I believe they said. No Rose Quartz is in her entourage. How'd she get close? How'd she get past the agates? How'd she get past the sapphires that would see her coming? How did it happen? Why did Pink Diamond stop her palanquin? Why'd she get out? It had to be someone with authority. It had to be someone who could cover it up. And then she says it had to be someone like you. And she points to the diamonds. Blue Diamond was shocked. Yellow got pissed. Uh, and then, of course, Yellow poofs her, which... So strong. Just that's the first time we've ever seen a diamond poof someone, and it took no effort. It was literally just finger press and you're done, which is so overpowered. But you know, that's expected of the diamonds. Then she shoots a lightning blast at the other Zircon that is like a gem destabilizer blast, so that's really fucking cool. And yeah, the diamonds are OP, as expected. Well, we don't really know what Blue Diamond can do. She she gets really upset in the episode and everyone starts crying, which I thought was gonna be a Steven empathy power thing, but no, it just turns out that when she gets really upset, everyone can feel her emotions, which, that's definitely interesting. Uh, this is definitely an interesting ab ability that she has. I'm not sure if there's a practical use for it in combat or what her combat abilities are, but yeah, that was that was an intense episode, man. The, the trial and everything, because it, it never made sense that we found out the person who made Rose's sword herself Bismuth said that sword can't shatter a diamond. It can only break a physical form. And then when they're saying, you know, a sword is what shattered Pink Diamond, well, how does that make any sense? And then in the same Bismuth episode, Rose Quartz is someone who said, you know, we can't shatter gems. We can't do that. She's against shattering gems. So there were already little holes in the story. But then Eyeball was like, I saw it happen. I was an eyewitness, you know, pun intended, to Rose Quartz doing it. So someone could have shapeshifted into Rose Quartz. We know that the rubies are very easily fooled. They were fooled by Amethyst, disguised as Jasper, even though the color was completely wrong. So there's a possibility that even if it was a yellow-looking rose quartz, because Yellow Diamond was really quick to dismiss shit when, they, when Zircon really got close to figuring this out. And uh, if it was a yellow rose quartz-looking thing that killed her, and, you know, Eyeball wouldn't know the difference. But, yeah, I don't know. It was... It was an intense episode. Uh, I think it's pretty much confirmed at this point Rose didn't do it. Uh, still could have, of course. I mean, that's obviously possible. Uh, there's all kinds of things that could happen. There, you know, there were different looks from the characters. You know, when the pearl was mentioned, Yellow Pearl got really nervous. There's all kinds of little details in the episode. I'm sure I missed things, but fantastic episode. Probably the best one, in my opinion, but the other two are still great. So let's talk about those. Okay, so off colors. This was a pretty big episode. It wasn't... I don't want to say it wasn't as intense as the last episode. It was more action intense than dialogue intense, because the dialogue was great in uh, the trial, but this was definitely a more action intense episode, as well as, you know, some chill time in the middle, kind of introducing all the off-color gems and everything, and they're all cool. Just going to get out of the way right now. My favorite is the fucking, the store brand or the off-brand fucking Sapphire. I know what her name is, but I can't pronounce that shit, so fuck that. Uh, I'm just calling her off-brand Sapphire. She's my favorite. She's adorable. Her late predictions are great and funny, so she's my favorite. But uh, they're all pretty cool. They all have creative designs, and they're all unique. So that's cool. They're definitely interesting characters that we'll probably see more of later. In fact, it seems like they're going to be part of the rescue going into Lars's head and, you know, going into the future of the season. At least hopefully these characters get rescued, and hopefully we see a lot more of them because they're definitely, uh, they're definitely cool characters. They're nothing phenomenal or groundbreaking, but they're definitely characters I want to see more of. I want to see... 
this uh, fusion which between looks like a pearl and maybe a ruby. I'm not sure. It uh, looks like that, but I'm not too sure. But this pearl is fused with something else, probably a ruby. I want to see how they interact with uh, Garnet. That could be really, really cool. And so on and so forth. So, yeah, they're cool characters. Uh, and then the big thing with Lars, we have this big action scene with the Robanoids. They can't scan Lars because he's human, so he's trying to be brave, he's trying not to be scared, he's fighting them off, Steven's helping him. The last Robanoid, he stabs it, it blows up, and then it happens. Lars fucking dies. Like, actually dies. Now, of course, he does get brought back to life, but he dies, and that's crazy. I'm really surprised they had the balls to do that, even though he does get brought back to life immediately after by Steven's healing tears. I don't want to call this a cop-out, because it's not just, oh, he gets brought back to life. He actually gets brought back pink and with different hair, and he has a scar over his eye, which is probably from the explosion. That's probably not from Steven uh, healing him, but still, he comes back different. He comes back changed, and we're going to find out what the details of that are in the next episode but it adds to the plot with Lion and all kinds of things, and yeah, it's it's definitely a really great way to revive a character, definitely. It serves the story, it serves Lars's character, it's a big deal. So yeah, they did a really, really good job bringing character back to life. With Tears especially, it can be a real big cop-out, cheesy kind of thing, but we knew Steven had healing Tears. We didn't know they could bring someone back to life, but the way he gets brought back to life is weird, so... Yeah, it's a really good episode. Uh, as far as world building goes, we get a little bit more of, like, gem ruins. We get a huge, huge kindergarten. Um, really, really cool. We get a bunch of new gems introduced. And then, of course, the big thing with Lars at the end. It's honestly an amazing episode. It might be better than the trial, uh, just from, like, an objective standpoint. But I like the trial a bit more because I really love... Uh, Zircons, just that scene where everything gets put together right there is so really cool. I like moments like that. I have a bias for moments like that when all the clues get put together like that. So, I don't know. It's hard to choose between these two, but the next episode's really good. I'm going to rewatch that one right now, but this episode's amazing. All these episodes are fantastic, but this episode, it's crazy. And I know it's, like, not that big of a deal that he died because he does get brought back, but it's just... He might be forever changed. Like, this is such a big thing for his character. It's so big for his character development to fight these Robanoids and to do what he did in this episode. Lars, it's okay to like Lars now. A lot of people didn't like him. A lot of people don't like this character just in general. But he is undeniably one of the best developed characters in the series. Even though I used to say I didn't like him, I would never take away that he's one of the best developed characters in the series, and this episode proves that even further, and so does the next episode, and I do genuinely like him now. Now, if they can somehow pull that miracle off with Ronaldo, this is the greatest show of all time, in my opinion, but I don't think they can pull that off with Ronaldo, but we'll have to wait and see. Either way, this is a fantastic episode. Let's move on to the final episode in the Wanted arc, and that is Lars's head. Okay, so the last episode, Lars's head. This episode was really good as well. It's more chill than the other ones, a bit more comedy in it. Um, you know, we get, like, Steven, he makes it back home, and he drinks the water and makes the sandwich, which is really funny. And, of course, the uh, off-brand Sapphire is, of course, hilarious and adorable like she was before. Uh, even more so, probably, in this episode, actually. And, yeah, so there's, it's a bit more of a lighthearted episode, but... Lars, okay, he is like Lion. He's pink, he has pink hair, lighter pink. I thought it was, like, blonde at first. Like, I couldn't really actually tell until I really paid attention, like, when he pointed out that he's pink because of the lighting in the area. But I guess his skin color was pretty different. It just didn't seem like it at first because of how dark it was in there. But, yes, he has pink hair, pink skin. He's like Lion. Steven can even go into his hair like Lion's mane, and there's a pocket dimension that can actually meet up with Lion's pocket dimension, and then he can actually come back to Earth, which is crazy. He comes back in with the food. Lars isn't hungry. Something's different with him. There's so many questions, like, why... Because Rose had a lot of lions in Buddy's book, so why is this the one lion that's still alive... Uh, the one that got turned pink got brought back to life. Why did she resurrect this one? Why didn't she resurrect the others? Are they resurrected? Are they just around Earth and we haven't seen them yet? Was this one special in some way to her? Who knows? What is this going to mean for Lars? Can he make portals? Is he immortal now? It's all kinds of crazy shit. So while it did answer one question about Lion and his origin, it raised even more about Lars and what's going to happen with him and 
how they're going to get him back, which isn't really specific to his new abilities, but well, maybe it could be with his warping power. Though he, there's no way he could warp all the way to Earth. I mean, Lion could barely warp to the moon without being exhausted, so there's no way Lars is making it back to the Earth. I mean, that's just not going to happen, but we'll have to see how they handle it. Uh, the rest of the episode is the off-colors basically finding out that the Earth is still around and wanting to go there because it sounds great. You're not going to get shattered for being different. So they want to go to the Earth, but Lars says he's going to stay. He says, you can go through my hair, you get there, I'll stay here. And he makes this sacrifice moment, but of course, they're not going to do that. Uh, they want to help him navigate the tunnels, keep him alive, while Steven goes back to Earth, meets up with the gems, tells everybody that he's safe and that they'll find a way to come and get him and bring him back and all the off-color gems. I hope that happens. I hope they do come to Earth. We don't have to see them, like, all the time or anything. They don't have to, like, live at the temple or live at the barn. But it would be nice to have more gems just there, you know what I mean? It doesn't have to necessarily be a new crystal gem army, but just more gem characters that can be interesting. And it'd be really cool to see Garnet interact with the fusion. Uh, I don't remember her name, but she looks like a pearl and a ruby. I think I said that before. Um, I don't know, I've done multiple takes to get these recordings right, so I'm not sure if I mentioned that, but she looks like a pearl in a ruby. Not sure if it's a ruby or not, but it definitely looks like a pearl in somebody. Definitely would be interesting to see Garnet interact with another fusion pretty much just like her. It's really cool, so, yeah, definitely want to see these characters again. They'll definitely show up again. Um, but yeah, and uh, Lars, he doesn't make the same sacrifice where everyone goes to Earth except for him. It's just Steven, and they're going to help him out. You know, off-colors had to stick together, which was a nice moment, and Steven and him hugging was a nice moment. His character development is fantastic here, and it's so good. Now, of course, there is the concern with Steven Universe and going from plot episodes to Beach City episodes is, please do not let the next episode be fucking Rock Naldo 2 or, like, Onion Gang, or some fucking, like, Steven and the Cool Kids DJ concert. Like, don't fucking do that. Please don't do that. Please keep it plot-focused, especially if this is going to be the last season, season of Steven Universe. We don't really know if it is or not. I don't know if it's confirmed that this is the last season, but they got a lot to cover. I almost want to say no Beach City episodes, but that's unrealistic. I'm sure we'll get a couple at some point, but please let this be a primarily plot-focused season. Either way, though, it's a huge episode. Steven makes it back to Earth. The gems show up. They're losing time. They don't know what they're going to do to rescue him. And he's there, and they're happy, and they all hug. And it's a nice moment, but of course, Lars is still on Homeworld, so you have that cliffhanger, and no more episodes are announced for now. It's probably going to be on hiatus again, and it's like, fuck, so we'll have to wait and see. Maybe it won't be on hiatus. They usually follow up Steven bombs with... Well, this wasn't really a Steven bomb. It was like an all-in-one-day thing, but... They don't usually follow, they usually follow up big events like this with, like, weekly episodes, but there's no announcement yet, so we'll have to wait and see, but, uh, these were fantastic episodes. I wish I had reviewed the episodes that came out in between the, uh, the Zoo arc and the Wanted arc. I wish I had reviewed all those episodes. I don't know why, I just, I was going to, actually. I was going to wait for there to be, like, five of them and review them all at once, kind of like this, and I just didn't, but, uh, maybe I'll talk about them at some point. I don't know, kind of a pointless video if I do that, but, uh. Future Steven Universe reviews will probably come if there's more big episodes like this. I'll wait for there to be a few episodes at once, review them in one big chunk. I feel like it's the best way to do it with a series that only has 11-minute episodes. But anyways, this was a great event. Some of the best Steven Universe episodes I've ever seen. Absolutely loved them. But what'd you guys think? Go ahead and tell me in the comments section below. You can also give this video a thumbs up and share it on social media. Both those would help me out a lot. Subscribe if you haven't already or if you like what you've seen here. I want to thank you guys for watching, and I will talk to you guys later. Bye.